so sorry i have been gone it's just been a bit manic trying to get back from sweden to england today i wanted to talk to you a bit about the thought process that we went through deciding what to do with the house and everything that went into that but before we get into the video i just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has shown love support watched our videos and stayed even with all my inconsistencies drowning in an ashtray trying to find my way make sure you like subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any videos because as you can see consistency at the moment is not my friend as we were getting ready to come back to england we were so unsure about what we wanted to do with the house we really don't want to say goodbye to the house and sell it but we also couldn't afford to just keep it up and running with no one in there it was about two months before we had to leave and so we decided to advertise on our YouTube channel to see if anyone wanted to rent out our house. That was primarily our aim, to rent the house out so that it was always there for us. However, we weren't having much luck so we decided to also try and sell it and rent it on the German eBay marketplace. We had so much interest from the German market and we went so far as to book a few people to come and see the house and we realized that with all the renovations that we had done prior the one thing we hadn't renovated was the porch area as a few people decided they were going to come and see the house we decided to paint it before painting we had to sand down the banisters they had this old white flaky paint which had to go so we really had to weigh out the pros and cons of selling and renting. So if we were to sell, we would have to pay 22% capital gains tax, I think it's called, on any profit that we made for the house. But the good thing is we wouldn't have to manage the house. If anything went wrong, we wouldn't have to fix anything. Another idea we did have is we could sell the house and buy another house. Because one thing we had always wanted is just to live a bit closer to the lake. And that's something we dreamed about when we came back to Sweden. And that way we could reduce the taxes that we paid. And we would probably buy a house which is closer to the lake. Definitely like run down. So you don't need to you don't need to pay for bills because the house would just be left empty because it would be a wreck and then we could come back and redo it in the future so that's something that we looked into and we actually even went to see some it's houses to think of you drowning in an ashtray trying to find my way around you the first house was really nicely done it was warm and pretty much ready to move in and we actually didn't love it as much. You see, in Sweden, it's imperative to have woodland where you can cultivate and harvest your own trees for warmth, especially if you don't have something like geothermal heating. This house had no woodland area, and although it was close to the lake, it had no view and was surrounded by many houses. The final nail in the coffin was the fact that the garage roof had fallen through. In Sweden, we believe, in our opinion, a garage is imperative. I like this road. It's cool. Practically your own tree line driveway. Okay. This way. Drowning in my first impressions. It's nice and secluded. Now this house I adored. I loved it so much. The house needs, clearly needs quite a bit of work. The owner of the house wasn't in, but allowed us to just see the outside. This side needs, well, it needs a side. <laughs> the roof needs some attention for sure. And the chimney by the looks of it. It had so much land and privacy. You have a look in here. Lovely little place, isn't it? Nice little Airbnb. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, it's pretty small. I mean, you can see, it's just... It's a kitchen and a bedroom, it's a studio. It's a perfect little Airbnb. It's a lovely Airbnb. Huh. I mean, this little terrace thing is lovely. It was both close to the lake, but also not quite. You see, the house was placed on a very steep hill. I've never seen something so steep. And the lake was just below. It is incredibly steep. Even if you could just cut the trees and plant, uh, pluck a house on top, up here, it'll be great. It's just the cutting of the trees. <laughs> Very peaceful with the sound of the water for sure. Careful, it's quite slippery here. Although the house wasn't quite near the lake, I just started to dream of all the amazing things we could do to the house when we came back. We could remove the trees on the steep hill somehow, making it clear. It just seemed so perfect. But sadly, Jack was not convinced. Sadly, the two people that decided they were going to see the house, one of them fell ill and the other just couldn't make it so far up north. So with two weeks left to go, we were in a bit of a pickle. Even though we didn't want to sell the house, we had to explore all our options. And as sad as it would have been to sell the house, it just seemed at the time like a suitable option. But I really believe that everything in this world happens the way it's meant to. And it was a blessing in disguise that we couldn't get the house sold because it would have been really sad and I'm very excited to hopefully return back to Sweden. The benefits of renting again is that someone gets to live and enjoy our house and we could make a little bit of extra income on it but to be honest it's just something that we put in a Swedish account in case anything breaks down and we need to fix it um, because well that is the life you have when you you own the house so it means you own all the liabilities as well you also have to pay taxes but we make such little money on it we don't get taxed that much actually so in sweden you get up to forty thousand sec tax free so that's about four thousand six hundred dollars and about four thousand pounds or euros um, that you get tax free and we are just over that limit so we will just have to pay 20% on anything over that and it doesn't work out to be too much as well so that is one thing so either way in Sweden you're gonna have to pay taxes so that's fine two months before we were leaving for England we also decided to rent out one of our rooms on Airbnb to a lovely lovely woman and Jack had always said, I bet the person we're going to rent out our house to is going to end up loving it so much and wanting to stay longer. Now, when the person came, we had discussed it a little bit and she wasn't sure because she wanted to be a little bit closer to the lake. However, after a month of um and ah in, figuring out plans and contracts and the people who were meant to buy the house falling through, she decided she would take on the house for the next year which is incredible because she is amazing and we have lived in the house with her she's honestly like family to me we became really good friends just before we left the house we had a lovely trip to a national park in sweden and it was just a lovely goodbye because this was the last time we were gonna see her for a bit it was so nice The reason it hurts so much to separate is because our souls are connected. Maybe they always have been and will be. Maybe we've lived a thousand lives before this one and in each one of them we found each other. And maybe each time we've been forced apart for the same reasons. That means that this goodbye is both a goodbye for the past 10,000 years and a prelude to what will come. But I have learned that if you must leave a place that you have lived in and loved and where all your yesterdays are buried deep, leave it anyway, except a slow way. Leave it in the fastest way you can. Never turn back and never believe that an hour you remember is better than an hour, because it is dead. Past years seem safe ones, vanquished ones, while the future lives in a cloud, formidable from the distance.
finally Sophia's last day in the house officially. For those of you who don't know, Sophia has been living with us um, and now she'll be taking over the house. Um, so that's very exciting. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi guys. <laughs> The only problem was for a couple of months she would go around traveling in Sweden, being by the beach, being by lakes. We decided to Airbnb the house for two months. And again, the people who were Airbnb in the house really wanted to stay a little longer, but our tenant is coming back. So I'm just glad to have such a little cute house, which literally touches the lives of everyone who goes in there. Everyone who goes there just wants to stay longer. And I feel so excited about that. So now we have a tenant, uh, we enjoyed a lovely time at the National Park and yeah, we managed to Airbnb the house for the two months that she wasn't there. So it's all very good, we're good. Guys, if you liked this video, please make sure you like, subscribe and turn on your notification bell and bear with me as we just settle back into city life and let me know what kind of things you'd like to see from the channel i'm not sure what direction it will take once we are fully settled into england but the plan is to kind of show you vlogs of us moving in and telling you a bit more about this little lovely slice of heaven that we have found in central london not so central but in london it's over here that no you're never given up.